Hello and welcome back to another video. In this one we will take a look at a most cursed project using the first generation Apple TV you have probably ever seen. Installing Android on it and without even opening it up. So everyone knows that Apple devices can't run Android, right? Then how can this work? The difference with the first generation Apple TV compared to other Apple devices is like we have seen multiple times in the past, that it is basically a stripped down x86 Intel PC. The other part that makes this possible is the fact that there are builds of Android for standard PC hardware using x86 Intel or AMD CPUs. Together with an open source bootloader for the first generation Apple TV, we can actually boot Android on it. Now to show you how exactly I combined these pieces. We of course need an Apple TV first generation and depending on the Android version we want to use one or two USB sticks. This will only work on the grey Apple TV first generation and not the later ones. Also a USB keyboard, USB hub and a PC that can boot from USB or CD is needed. The reason for the two USB sticks is that we need to create a boot stick that loads the Android kernel and then a partition containing the Android operating system, including the kernel. Most versions of Android expect a drive with the MBR or master boot record partition table, while the boot stick needs to be GPT or GUID partition table. If we don't want to mess with a hybrid GPT MBR, we can just use two USB sticks. So first we need to create the boot stick. <laughs> no, not like that. For this we download the image of the Apple TV bootloader or we could just compile the project ourselves from GitHub. Links are as always in the video description. This leaves us with an image file containing the bootloader. Now we use a program like Blina Etcher to burn the image onto one of the USB sticks. This can be the smaller one and basically any USB stick should work here since the image is only 250 megabytes in size. After Etcher is done we can test the boot stick by plugging it into the USB port of the Apple TV and powering it up. This looks promising. We are booted into Penbuntu, which seems like a slimmed down version of Ubuntu. Now we can download the Android ISOs from one of the links in the description. We could use any version of Android x86 that is compiled for a 32-bit CPU, since the Pentium M in this Apple TV is only 32-bit. Next we need two things. A USB stick that should generally be larger than 4GB depending on the Android version we want to install of course, and a computer to boot Android and install it to this USB stick. Before we continue we should make sure that the USB stick is formatted as X3. This is needed since the patch sticks Linux is a bit too old to understand X4 and most Android installers only have an option to format to X4. Next we install Android on this USB stick. In my case I burned the Android 8 ISO onto a CD since the image is small enough and I didn't have another USB stick. But one could of course use a USB stick for this part. We then select the Android boot medium on boot up and wait for it to load. In this menu we select the installation to hard disk. Now we need to be very careful to select the right storage medium here, otherwise we could wipe the operating system on this computer. In most cases it is easy to spot the USB stick here, since the name of the device is written at the end there. We select the USB stick and don't format, since we want to keep the X3 formatting. If the installer asks us to install group, we accept that, since we need that later. We can set the system to read-write and then wait for the installer to finish. Ah, 
After the installation is done, we boot the newly installed Android. This is to complete the initial setup since this will be way faster than doing it on the Apple TV. After the setup is done, we can shut off the computer and proceed to the next step. What I found funny here is that the PC's power button effectively behaves like the power button on a phone, which means I have to long press it to bring up the power menu, which feels kinda wrong. Back to the Apple TV. We now need a USB hub with at least three ports. One for a USB keyboard, one for the USB stick with Android on it, and one for the boot stick. After plugging them all in, we can start the Apple TV. At this login prompt, we log in as the root user, using root as username and root as password. Next we need to find out the name of the volume containing our Android installation. Looking in proc slash partitions reveals that the 64GB USB stick we used to install Android is SDC and its primary partition containing Android is SDC1. SDA is probably the Apple TV's internal hard drive, or SD card in my case, and SDB the boot stick. Now let's mount the Android partition to slash MNT and then change to this directory. A quick ls shows us that this is the right partition since it contains a folder called Android 8.1. To test the Android installation, we can use kxec to start the Android kernel. Wow, what was that? Hmm, this doesn't look too good. I guess we need to try another version of Android. So after burning and reinstalling like 10 versions of Android, it looks like the older the Android version, the better. Who would have thought? especially since the Apple TV only has 256 megabytes of RAM. So now let's retry this step using Android 5.1. I meant 4.4. Never mind, let's just settle for Android 2.2 from like 10 years ago. This finally actually booted, but it's dog slow. More of a slideshow than a usable operating system. Sadly, I'm not really sure why. If we look at a smartphone from 2010, they have comparable specs to this Apple TV, besides the low RAM. If you have any idea, write it in the comments. Maybe Android x86 is just super unoptimized. With a bit of tinkering, we might get swap working or something like that, which might help. But as a proof of concept, this will do fine for today. Hey, me from the future here. I actually got Android 4.0.4 running on the Apple TV the day after recording this part. But sadly, it was just as slow. The next step was to make Android startup automatically when the Apple TV is powered on. For this we first have to understand a bit of what the boot stick actually does. The boot stick contains a shell script that is run on startup. As far as I know, this was originally used to restore the Apple TV's firmware. We can modify the script to add code that can automate what we did to start Android. I first removed all the unneeded stuff from the file. Then I added two lines to mount our USB stick with Android on it. After that we can use kxec to load the Android kernel like we did before. This is where our group installation comes into play. Since Android x86 usually wants some more command line parameters to boot, we can just steal them from the group entry in the group menu list file. With that done, I added some outputs and saved the file. Now technically we would be done here and could boot into Android. 
But while looking through the files, I noticed that the com.apple.bootplus in the recovery partition has a field for the name of the Apple TV boot logo. So I made my own one in Photoshop by combining the Apple TV logo with the powered by Android one to create this cursed thing here. To install this, all I have to do is copy the new picture to the recovery partition and change the name of the image in the boot.plist file. Now we're done. When we now connect the USB sticks to the Apple TV and plug it in, we see our cursed boot logo, followed by an automatic boot into Android 2.2 in this case. And the cool part is, we didn't even have to take the Apple TV apart for this one. Now is this usable? Absolutely not. Would I recommend you to go out and buy an Apple TV just to try this? Probably not. But I just love tinkering with this box and I had lots of fun bringing Android to an Apple device. I hope you had as much fun watching as I had making this. Now if you liked this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, for example even more crazy stuff with this Apple TV, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.